feeling like you're not managing your emotions well? Need some strategies to keep you from blowing your cool? I'll give you three simple solutions that you can apply today. Let's get going. For smart communication, career, and social skills tips, subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to get notified when I post a video every Tuesday. Managing our emotions is a struggle for all of us because we're emotional creatures. We were wired to emote first before we think rationally. I'm Paul Pichot with Whole Worker, and I've been having a great time in the past 20 years training professionals like yourself in the corporate world. Now I want to bring all of my training expertise to you directly through this YouTube channel. Now stick with me to the end of this video because I've got a free tool that'll take your emotional intelligence to the next level. And I think I mentioned it free. All right, let's get to it. Before we go anywhere, let's define emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is our ability to recognize and understand and manage our emotions and do that with the emotions of others as well. And to use that information to help us make better decisions. Now, within emotional intelligence, there are four competencies or four skills, if you will. There's self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. In this video, we're going to be talking exclusively about self-management. So what does someone who's high in the skill of self-management within emotional intelligence look like? Well, they tend to be people who are a little bit patient with others. They tend to be a little bit more understanding. They also can be often good listeners. They're people that will take the time to listen. Uh, they're sensitive to others in that regard. One of the most important characteristics of people that are high in self-management is that they're responders and not reactors. They tend to think through the process and have their emotions under control and manage them well. They uh, are seen sort of sometimes as is being kind of wise, they're professional and polite. And another key characteristic is they're non-explosive. They're, they're people that don't tend to let their emotions explode from them. So if these are characteristics that you'd like in your own emotional intelligence, then self-management is the skill that you want to increase. Let me show you three ways you can do that. Okay, this first tactic is so simple, your mom probably taught you. I call it sleep on it. Whenever we're making a decision, very often emotions well up inside and we make that decision emotionally. Well, sleeping on it helps remove that reactionary behavior by just padding some time in there. That padding of time also induces reflection. It forces us to reflect and thirdly, come up with rationalizations, good rationalizations for making the decision rather than making it emotionally. And lastly, sleeping on it allows for changes in the situation, which often happens overnight. So this is the first tactic that we can use to increase our self-management of our emotions. I call it sleep on it. Hey, have you ever made that decision in the heat of the moment and regretted it 24 hours later? I have, we all have. Share that in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Okay, this next self-management skill gets a little deeper. I call it emotions versus reason. You know, very often when we need to make a decision or when we're in a situation, our emotions flare up and they can get in the way, but they're also trying to tell us something. So I want you to do two things. I want you to make two lists, one list of all the emotions that you're feeling and the other list of all the rational actions you could take to alleviate this situation or make this decision. Then I want you to ask yourself two questions, two very important questions. The first is, where is emotion clouding my judgment? Where is emotion clouding my judgment? Where is it getting in the way? Very often, anger and fear get in the way and cloud our judgment. So ask yourself that question. The other question is the flip side of the coin. Where is reason, my reasoning powers, ignoring what my emotions are telling me, right? We don't want to, we don't want to ignore our emotions. So where is reason ignoring the emotional cues and clues that I may be receiving? If you pass those lists through those two questions, you'll make better decisions and be in better control of your emotions. That's the skill I call emotions versus reason. Hey, I've got lots of ways you can increase your emotional intelligence for free. So stick with me to the end and I'll share those things with you. Okay, this last skill to increase our self-management of our emotions 
I call visualization. And you may already practice this in some respects. I wanna bring it into our discussion of emotional intelligence and show how it can benefit us here. So what we need to do here is picture situational success. There are always those situations that we go into that are triggers for our emotions. Well, what would success in that situation really look like? I want you to picture it because our brains work in terms of pictures. You might need to close your eyes. You certainly need to get quiet for a minute and picture situational success. You know, one of the cool things about our brains is it can't tell the difference between our imagination, what we're picturing in our head, and reality. You ever have a bad dream and wake up because the bats were chasing you and you're in a cold sweat? Were the bats really chasing you? No, they weren't, but you were sweating about it. Our brains can't tell the difference between our imagination and reality. So when we picture um, emotional success and situational success, this can be very helpful to us. And then the final thing we need to do is we need to practice situation simulation. Try to simulate that situation, that triggering situation that triggers those emotions. Try to practice uh, a simulation of that as much as possible. So when you picture yourself walk into that room that makes you feel fearful because there's so many big wigs in the room, picture going in with confidence and walk into that room with confidence. Even go into that very room if you can and simulate as much of that success as possible. When you practice this visualization over and over and over again, those situations when they actually come up in real life will not cause you that emotional flow. There. It's a technique I simply call visualization. Now, these three skills are just three of the 32 total skills that I give you in an emotional intelligence course that I have online right now. The um, course description page link is in the show notes below. Take a look at that if you want to really boost your emotional intelligence. Okay, want to expand your emotional intelligence a little bit more and for free? I've got a free download for you. I call it 10 Ways to Boost Your Emotional Intelligence. It's a 10-page ebook that you can download right now. The link for that is below this video in the show notes. So hit that up right now. Okay, we've got multiple ways you can connect with the whole worker community. You can hit up our Facebook page, hit us up on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, we've got a website, wholeworker.com, where you can get more free tools to increase your communication skills and your social emotional intelligence skills as well. So feel free to hit up those links. Those are in the show notes as well. Okay, that's it for now. Hey, if you like this video, hit like right now. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so that you get notified every time I post a video, which is each Tuesday. And feel free to share this channel with your friends as well. I'm Paul Pichot with Whole Worker. If you found this video helpful, type helpful in the comments below. Thanks for watching.